Hey, Junction City Today fans, thanks for tuning in. Craig Bielek, your host. Over here and over there, we have Farrell Lafferty, your host. That's me. In the middle, we have Clayne E. Wayman, an author, uh, a very interesting guy. I've just spent a few minutes prepping the show and chatting with him. Man, we got a lot to talk about, Clayne. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I, I just don't even know where to start. Maybe, you know, I'm going to have Farrell. I'm going to have Farrell reveal well, one of the things you just told us. You know, I was... We're sitting here, and, and he comes in, and, hey, nice to meet you, and I'm just kind of on my phone texting, and Bill's talking to him, and all of a sudden he says, he has 44 siblings. I said, right. How does anybody have 44 siblings? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There's and your then, first question. How and, does anybody have 44 yeah. siblings? Well, it's pretty easy when you marry four gals. <laughs> so, <laughs> and apparently that kind of happens Well, I've married three, just not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So you're you're talking about your grandfather, right? Yeah. And his, whose name was also Clayne. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And you've written a book. Before we get too much farther into this, it's re appearing right over there. Uh, we we actually can't say the title on air, but let's just say it's "Let Your Stuff Shine." Yeah. And the stuff is actually poop with a different word, yeah, right? The, the, yeah. Yeah. The, Why did you choose that title for for your book? I mean, you you, you have to know that's going to make it awful hard for. It to appear TV on the Deseret <laughs> Book, you know, uh, on the Deseret Book marquee. I mean, I'm being completely serious yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. So, Featured Deseret Book. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd be happy to address that. Uh, the title, you know, Let Your Poop Shine begins right. with uh -huh. the SH, you know. What it is is it's the full acceptance of all of life. It's, okay. it's reaching the ultimate place of, of forgiveness. All right. And when you reach the ultimate place of forgiveness, you realize that there's really nothing to forgive. So forgiving and, people, forgiving yourself, yeah, yeah. forgiving so, Farrell? That's, <laughs> that's a big issue in a lot of lives yeah, in yeah, this well, world. <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah, so I have a profound uh, journey story that I share growing up in the polygamous family that I was raised with. I was okay. uh, fraught with uh, many different difficulties things that would, you know, set me up to not be successful in life. Mm -hmm. And what I share in my journey is how I transcended it all. And I transcended it through uh, the path of what I refer to in the book, the path of discovery. Okay. Uh, and when you go through the path of discovery, one of the things that is essential to that path is the full acceptance of life as it is. And the things that we want to ignore during that path is the, quote, poopy things. All right, yeah. Uh, and so when you yeah. let it shine, you won't yeah. get to your divine light unless you allow that to shine. Right. And we're going to get into that. I, my, wanna, yeah. my, I just want to ask you a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you say you, you had four mothers? Is That's that right. right. Yeah. Four mothers. And were, oh. were you aware of who was your actual mother, yes. or did that matter? Um, well, uh, growing up in our family, uh, one of the things that we were taught and raised with was... Uh, embrace all of your mothers as your own mother. Right, right. However, we did know who our specific birth mother was. Right. So you yeah. have four mothers. You, so you have four people calling you saying, you never call me. You never call me. You never call me. Okay, I, you never call. You never call. You never, you it know, came with I, its perks, though. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, like if one said no, you could just go to another. <laughs> oh, you know, another I, mother. I just, <laughs> just got to go back just a little bit. It takes a good man to have four wives all at the same time. Could you imagine? Well, here's the thing. I, oh, I've i toyed man. with the idea of having multiple wives. Mm. I've just never wanted multiple mother-in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've thought this through. Yeah. yeah, I never thought of that. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's a real thing. Right, yeah. right. And then you had, like, say, 44 siblings. You were number Different. 45, right? Uh, no, I was the fourth of the whole bunch. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, and wow. we, were at a, we were at a family get-together just over the weekend, and one of my brothers piped up and said, no, you have 44 siblings. There's 45 combined. Oh, right. And so I had to uh, take a step back and like, okay. Right. Because that's just how many there are. Is, is... Could you imagine a food bill? Uh, no, oh. I, I, I just, I, it just, I cannot believe it. But, <laughs> but I wanted to ask, so what, 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 are the, what were the positive things of growing up in that environment? There was a tremendous uh, amount. Hand me down. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Obviously. laughs> there were a lot. <laughs> there, there were a ton, a ton of hand me downs. Yeah. One of the things is we were really taught the art of work your butt off. Yeah. Uh, we were raised on a small family farm where we mm -hmm. raised cows, pigs, and chickens with occasional goats and a few other things. Uh, so at the time, it was a bit of a drudgery, but as an adult, it taught us that, to get in and work, 
to get in and, and accomplish things. And so at an early age, uh, what one of the huge benefits that it provided for me is to be able to go out in the workforce and make a difference for myself. I got in the business world re relatively early. Uh, I haven't punched a time clock in approximately 15 years wow. running my own mortgage uh, business. Okay. Uh, and I really contribute that to just that work ethic. I mean, buck and hay at an early age, milking cows with my bare hands at 10 years old. Wow. Uh, so wow. I would say that was a, a huge perk. Right. Uh, another, another huge perk was we loved it when they had family gatherings. Because uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, that we could do is we, we would meet you know, a uh, aunts, uncles, and cousins and it was just like meeting a whole other family of <laughs> yeah. friends. Yeah. You're having <laughs> a reunion didn't know, we didn't at the D have. event center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. No, wow, that that's incredible. So you have so you 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 have you have an actual business. You've you've got that, but then you're also an author, and you've you're trying to pull all these life experiences. You told me that you died twice. Yeah, I have two twice. I have two death experiences in my book that I cover. Farrell. Gosh. Farrell's got nothing. Farrell's like, Farrell's like, I thought I was good at catch and release. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> There's been a couple yeah. times I wish I would have yeah, done it. Yeah, and I share a few details on the other side of that's, what I experienced on that That's all in the book. Because that, that has to be the ultimate discovery. It is the ultimate discovery. It is profound. Wow. Uh, in fact, when I even read some of the stuff that I, that I put to the page from the experiences, today it still puts me into tears. Really? It's just that beautiful. What are you hoping people get from your, uh, you're also a speaker. Uh -huh. Okay. What do you What do you want them to learn from your book or from when you go out and speak to groups and those kind of things? What What are you hoping they walk away with? What I walk away with is to share with everybody that they have the tools of discovery already within them. A lot of times in uh, our culture and society, and this is me included, is we really worship at the altar of belief instead of our own innate ability to go out and discover. Uh -huh. Discover Discovery sets me free. It sets you free. Whereas if I wanted to manipulate you, if I wanted to lie to you, all that I would need to do is try and get you to believe something. Right. Whereas we set both of each other free when we invite each other to discover. Cool. So here's yeah. what I'm getting from it, right? Don't, don't believe something just because you're told that. Like, That's right. Like, like, discover it. Yeah, like learn and, and study on things and try to figure out, you know? On your own. Right, right. How and many that, spiders do you eat in your sleep, Farrell? I know I'm asleep when I'm eating them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard this a little while ago that the that people people were told many times that you eat I don't know eight spiders on an average in your life in your sleep, and that that is a statistic that just came from absolutely BS. Yeah. Okay. That but people heard it enough and were no. told it enough and told it enough by you know oh Dave told me and Rick told me and Sheila mm -hmm. told me and all that other kind of stuff. Well, it's got to be true. I mean, That's you right. know, if, if everybody's saying it, it's got to be true. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody researched it, obviously, somewhere, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, but but no, I mean, they, they really dug into it and, and could find absolutely no research to back this That's thing right. Up. But people believed it forever. That's right. I mean, even the power of belief is so incredibly powerful. That's even proven in medical science with the placebo oh, yeah. effect. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, they for give sure. the placebo group, usually it's a sugar pill that they, they mm -hmm. believe they're getting the, the, the real mm -hmm. deal. And on average, the placebo group is getting the benefits of the perceived drug right. 30 to 60%. Every single time. Yeah. And Plus they're getting sugar. They get the benefits <laughs> of the blood. Yeah. yeah. Let's, hope we're, not Let's hope we're not diabetic yeah. getting sugar. <laughs> I'm sure the, the, the screening they take. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, well, <laughs> you know, here we are. We're sitting here. It's 2019. Um, our nation is, and probably most of the world is more, more polarized right now than ever. That's right. You know, you got you got. Farrell over there on the red side, and you got Craig over here on the blue side. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. I believe things. Farrell and I were just having a, a debate right before this show about auto <laughs> auto vehicle inspection. And you right. know, and and we believe very different <laughs> things. How do you get us together? Is that and what what? How does your book suggest doing that? It's through the path of discovery. The thing that you mean I got to get to know Farrell? I don't want to. Do <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Isn't there an easier way? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's the thing is we all think there's an easier way, yeah. and that's all why we look up to a politicians as the great messiah that's going to save us from the mess. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. politicians play this game like they're the great messiah. Both sides play that game. Right. And instead of coming to the table and having a conversation and discovering what each other are really saying. Wow. Interesting. 
that's Interesting. that's what this is about. The discovery is dis when you when you go through this discovery, what both sides will discover is that we're all one. We're all one in this. And that's one of the things that I discovered during my death experience, my first death experience, is the oneness of all of us. I bet this is the only program we've had that included the term "my first death experience." <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely serious. This is very, this is very unique, very Thank unique. You. you want people to discover 100%. what's inside them. You want them to get to know each other. That's right. You want Farrell and I talk. Yeah. You know, well, that sort of thing. What he want. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so you, you, your book, is it ready now? Or the the ready, book is written. We're working on the back of the, just the behind the scenes, the publishing things that needs to happen during the behind the scenes. Uh, look for it uh, on Amazon this summer. Wow. Wow. And if you just joined us, I've kind of been remiss in mentioning this, but this is our guest, Clayne E. Wayman. And Clayne is an author, a speaker, a mortgage dealer. Uh, professional. That's just like a mortgage dealer. Right, yeah, right. Right. Jack dealer. Among other things. Among other things. Yeah. You have hobbies. Dying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them, apparently. Yeah. But yeah. no, no. What else? Do you, what, do, what do you like? What do you? What do you do? You know, I really love to. I, I love music. I love different uh -huh. types of music. Uh, you play an instrument? Yeah, right now, I'm working on. I I to doodle around with the piano. Okay. And I'm at the beginning stages of doodling with the guitar. All right. Uh, that uh, so I'm you know harnessing that ability. Uh, another thing is my life has really been involved with uh, working and discovering. Right. And so uh, I also love to travel. I've spent three weeks uh, in Peru about a year ago cool. and have had some profound experiences in, other, cool. in Peru and other places. I imagine one of your major hobbies is birthday cards for all your siblings <laughs> and, your, and your family. I mean, every single day. Happy birthday. Put it in the oh, mail. Man, yeah. that. Oh, God. No, how do you do that? I mean, how do you do you have a relationship with all of your siblings? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, and to an certain extent, uh, no, because because uh, a lot there's several of them that come. To, uh, you know, I'm being one of the oldest. Right. There's some of the younger ones like I don't see on an everyday basis. Uh, but the ones that I was raised with, we're, we relatively have a great relationship. I mean, normally, you know, with more relationship dynamics, you would have, you know, the butting heads and type of things that happen in, in relationships. For the most part, growing up, my best friends were my siblings. I'm sure. I'm sure. What's the age span? What's the oldest sibling to the youngest? The oldest to the youngest uh, is a brother who just turned 40, 41. Okay. Uh, and the youngest is nine. Wow. Oh, wow. And all in, in between there, man, you guys oh, got you, the school system covered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, could literally. Could you no imagine? There, <laughs> you're blowing Farrell's mind. Right <laughs> you, you really are. You really are. I need to go see Craig's friends so, at the hospital. So, so Clay, here's, here's a question, and this might be a little too personal, but yeah. like when you, when you became an adult and decided to seek a relationship, I, I mean, I assume you have a relationship, mm -hmm. did you, were you thinking a multiple partner relationship? Or oh, did, yeah. that ever, did that ever cross your mind and start your own business, a little... Mom, 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 and pop shop, or something. Mom and mom and mom and pop shop. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, marriage was in the forefront of conversation all, right. all uh, growing up. So, right. uh, gr as I matured into adulthood, I fully expected to have multiple wives and raise a, mo a family with large, uh, with, mm. with 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 kids and lots of kids and so forth. And uh, so, yeah, that was that was the at the onset. That was where I was headed. You, you were thinking about that. Yeah. Huh? It, 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 I mean, to a certain extent, it must have felt normal and natural. Oh, this is what it, we're was a, do. it was a way of life. In mm -hmm. fact, when I looked over to my neighbors, they would yell and taunt us and say, oh, you plagues, you plagues. They'd point fingers and so forth. Uh, plagues? <laughs> yeah, That's they a term? Pigs like, it was a, like it was a swear word. Oh, and I remember plagues. as a 10-year-old getting up and screaming at them, oh, you monogamist. Like the monogamist was considered a swear word. Yeah. Uh, you onesies. So, you onesies. You onesies. <laughs> oh, I love that you, term. You don't have no game. You only get one wife. Look That's at me. Right. Look, at, yeah. look at all this. Yeah. So, yeah, it was perfectly normal. It was actually weird seeing my neighbors who only had one mother. Wow. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Clayne Wayman. Interesting. His book is called... Let your sh let uh, your, shine. Let your stuff oh, shine. shine yeah. We're going to call it that. Uh, it's a it's a word we can't say on TV, but yep. uh, I'm sure you figured it out by now. <laughs> but the whole point is digging up that uh, dark stuff 
and transcending it, bring it on out and letting it letting it happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clean's also available if you're interested to uh, to to speak yeah. at your events. You know those those kind of things. Um, it's got a great story, great history. You don't have a website right now. Yeah. How could okay. people get in touch with you? You got Facebook? Yeah. Right yeah. now, look, look up my full name on Facebook, Clayne Edward right. Wayman. Right. And right. there's a reason I have my Edward in there, just because, you know, my grandfather right. was the patriarch of the family, and so there's a lot of the family members who took that name. Right. So to clear, distinguish which claim we're talking about here, I have uh, my whole name spelled out. So, yes, yeah, look me up on wonderful. Facebook. Wonderful. And my website right now is, uh, we're getting worked on so we can have it. Well, this has been great to have you yeah. with us today. We're, we're going to let you go. It's it's March, and you've got to get ready for Mother's Day, <laughs> which requires quite a bit of preparation. On your, on your, in fact, then, we should have had you on in November. To and, go then, and then Craig wonders why no one likes him. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. It's not true. My mom likes me. My mom, one mom, Joyce. Hello, Joyce. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Clayne, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We'd like to have you on again. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Farrell, take us on out, man. Hey, thanks for watching Junction City today. It's my friend Craig Farrell, and I've already forgot this lovely man's name. <laughs> it's Clay. Clay. Clay E. Wayman. <laughs> that's, what, that's why Craig does the introductions, because I'm horrible. Just like Wayne, but Clay. Just like Wayne, but Clay. Make sure you check out his book. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. Say bye, Craig. Say bye, Craig, and bye-bye to you, 45. <laughs> <laughs>